you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And on today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this is somebody that I honestly never really thought that I would have to do a Daily Dose of Stupid for. General Mad Dog Mattis. Now, I have a great deal of respect for General Mattis, but I also have a responsibility to when somebody does something stupid, they gotta be featured on the Daily Dose of Stupid. That's the way that it works. And even if it's somebody I generally agree with and generally like, when they're wrong, they're wrong, and I'm going to call them out on it. So, General Mad Dog Mattis, uh, he had this piece where he basically denounced Trump in the Atlantic, and if you want to read it, by all means, go to it. We'll, we'll show a little clip of it here in a second. But his repudiation of Trump revolves around this threat that Trump made a couple of days ago to invoke the Insurrection Act. And here's my beef with that. I don't want presidents willy-nilly marching military into our towns and municipalities. That is not a thing that I desire. It is not a thing that I want. I'm not one of these, uh, you know, the second there's any hint of insurrection that you immediately go to that. But here's the thing that I can't get over. If now is not the time to use it, when? If we have in multiple United States cities across the country, we have violent mobs going in, destroying property, and calling for the downthrow of the American system. I don't understand when there would be an appropriate time to use the Sedition Act, sorry, the Insurrection Act, if not right now. Can you come up with a scenario that would be more fitting? if that were the case. Because the military already has authority to fend off foreign threats. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. The reason that there is a higher bar to clear, the reason that the Insurrection Act of 1807 was invented and the reason that it was put in there is to say, look, if there is a domestic threat that crops up within the borders of the United States that also threatens the overthrow of the system, the president does have the right to use military force against them. And remember that what President Trump specifically threatened to do, and it was a threat, I, I know there are a lot of people who are saying, well, it wasn't a threat. Yeah, it was a threat. That doesn't mean that the threat is necessarily bad, but it is a threat. Don't say that it's not a threat. It's definitely a threat. What he was saying there is, if this continues, and, and this is the second qualifier, if your local governors and local mayors continue to do nothing, then. So it's an if-then statement. If these two qualifications are met, it continues to go on, and if your local leaders refuse to do anything about it, they refuse to protect their own citizens, then I will use the Insurrection Act and step in and use military force. How is that inappropriate? If you have a enemy that, like Antifa, like Black Lives Matter, that at least at the top levels, I'm not saying every single person that is marching, but especially at the top levels, that are saying that they want an overthrow of the capitalist system, you have that going on. They want to overthrow the American government. And you're saying that if, if your local leaders and local police force and local National Guard or whatever, and, and I would prefer for them to handle this. Don't get me wrong. I'm still a Federalist. But if they refuse to do that, if the governors refuse to mobilize the National Guard, if your mayors refuse to stop these riots and, and protect property and protect private citizens, what else is the president supposed to do? Explain to me how that is an inappropriate response to what is going on there. This is a domestic threat. Remember that the oath of office for the President of the United States is to protect it from all threats, both foreign and domestic. Well, if this is not the time to step in, then I don't know when is. And I don't think that that time has quite shown up yet in the sense that I think that President Trump was right to say, Let's give it a, a few days, but if it doesn't stop soon, then I'm going to step in. I'm glad that there's a little bit of a waiting period, but considering that we've already been going through this for about a week now, I'd say that time has pretty much come. 
And if this thing cannot be stopped by the National Guard or the others, it makes sense for the United States military to step in. I'd rather they not do that. I'd rather, you know, hang back for a little bit. But we have to understand that the threat of people that want to destroy America is real. It is here. They are open about it. They're not hiding it. They're calling for the overthrow of the government. They're calling for the overthrow of capitalism. And when you had people literally trying to break into the White House and having 500 Secret Service agents getting injured over the past few days, trying to defend it, that's anarchy. And that's part of the reason that our military exists is to protect us from threats like that. I know that usually... They deal with outside threats, and that's good. I'd rather them normally be handling that and letting our police officers and uh, things of that nature handle the local threats. But if that fails, or if it, uh, if the people in charge, you know, this is worse, refuse to act, then that is the reason that the military exists. And also, let's also keep in mind that this is not something that is completely unprecedented or unheard of. That was the shtick that a lot of people in the media were trying to do. It's the shtick that, even though he didn't right out say it, General Mattis kind of alluded to in his piece, saying that this is something that is just so wildly unprecedented. Well, no, it's not. It's even happened in my lifetime, and I'm only 30 years old. In 1992, President George H.W. Bush used the same act, the Insurrection Act of 1807, to stop this in L.A., in a response to the L.A. riots. And the same thing was going on there. The people in charge, the people locally, refused to enforce that, refused to make sure that that was going to stop, and so George H.W. Bush stepped in and stopped it. And by the way, we see a very similar thing happening, uh, even though it, it didn't wind up going quite this far, George W. Bush almost did the exact same thing in response to Katrina. Because you remember there was a big kerfuffle between him and the mayor of New Orleans. And so this was something that the president almost used at that to get relief to the people that were there. But regardless, they act as though this is something that is just so wildly out of the blue and no president has ever done it. I, I even saw articles that were wrong saying that it has never been used in the, the 20th century. Uh, one said, I think what happened is someone saw that it had been never, never been used in the 21st century, which is accurate. Because, like I said, 1992 was the last time it was invoked. Uh, but I think that they, they misquoted it and <laughs> put the 20th century. So, funny little mistake there. But anyway, uh, so all of this is happening. And Trump did say that he was only going to use it as a last resort. And so I don't really understand what General Mattis is upset about considering all of these things. And the worst part of this whole article, and the one that made me bleed through the eyes, was this here you can see. This quote from his piece, this is General Mattis in the Atlantic. And you can see there that in this article, he says, I, I, I can't even, it's hard for me to even read it because of how angry this particular uh, statement makes me. But here it is. Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. Are you freaking kidding me? Did you sleep through the entirety of the Obama years? Now, remember that I'm just looking at it through the lens of my lifetime, but what General Mattis said was in his lifetime, and he's significantly older than I am. I don't remember Nixon because I wasn't born yet, but he does. I don't remember. Well, would he have been alive? Yeah, he would have been alive during Lyndon Baines Johnson. But he was alive for that. I mean, heck, even you could go back to, to a great degree, Jimmy Carter. That's the reason that he was kicked out after four years is because he was such a controversial figure. I, I don't understand that rationale at all. Did he just forget about Barack Obama? Are we just going to pretend that those eight years didn't happen? Or, or what, did he buy into the propaganda that the media was peddling, that Barack Obama was perfect and never did anything wrong and was the second coming and never had any scandals or never had any issues and there was nobody that didn't like him. Are you freaking kidding me? <sighs> Remember, I mean, this is the guy 
who had the whole controversy with Jeremiah Wright, somebody that was saying that America deserved 9-11, and that was the person who Barack Obama sat in his pew listening to his sermons for 20 years. And then you had Eric Holder, the attorney general that was saying that he was the president's wingman, specifically covering for the president. Let's also not forget Van Jones, the self-proclaimed communist that worked for the White House. And people talked about that for, you know, the entirety of Van Jones being in there. It was so controversial that eventually he had to be dismissed. Uh, what about the IRS scandal where President Barack Obama used his power of office to specifically go after his political opponents in the form of the Tea Party, investigating them, making sure that they couldn't get their nonprofit status, holding up their request to do so, trying to intimidate them, and did so right around the time, specifically, that he was up for re-election. And talking about going after political enemies, let's not forget all of the new things that have just surfaced here recently with Michael Flynn. I mean, Barack Obama is still dividing people, even though he's been out of office for nearly four years now. Don't give me this crap about he's the only one that doesn't unite the American people. Give me a break. And I mean, I could go down the laundry list here. He also remembered that when Barack Obama took office, the average American, and this is including across all of racial lines, said that racism was still a, uh, is still a significant problem in this country. Only 2% of Americans, when surveyed, said that they thought it was. By the time he left office, it had grown to about 20%. So Barack Obama spent the vast majority of his time stoking the flames of racial intolerance and uh, divisions along racial lines. Let's not forget the way that he was absolutely horrible on gun policy, actually put out policies that would prevent senior citizens from getting firearms just because they had somebody helping them with their finances. And let's also not forget international apology tours where he was basically going out and saying that America is the worst country and that we have so much to apologize and we're basically the cause of all the world's problems. Signing on to the, what was that, the G20 Paris Climate Accords when he did that and all of the division that took place as a result of that. Remember that he also lit up the White House in rainbow colors to celebrate the Obergefell case in saying that gay people can get married in all 50 states now. That wasn't controversial? I mean, has Matt has been living under a rock this whole time? The DOJ siding against Christians? I mean, let's not forget the whole Obamacare thing, where they passed it when almost 70% of the American population was against it. And Barack Obama still signed it into law, even though there were an awful lot of people that voted for him that didn't even like that law. And when it comes to the enforcement of that law, going after Christians for their religious beliefs, going after the little sisters of the poor, a bunch of Catholic nuns that don't want to provide birth control to their employees because it's against their religion, going after people like the, the guy that owns Masterpiece Cake Shop, Jack Phillips, going after him because he doesn't want to make a cake that glorifies gay marriage because he's a Christian, a guy that doesn't even make Halloween cakes because he doesn't believe in it. All of that apparently not controversial, didn't divide anybody. Super uniting. Very uniting force, that Barack Obama. That's not even getting into the Hillary Clinton email scandal and the whole thing with Benghazi, Benghazi where we found out later that they were lying to us. That's not including the Iran deal. That's not including him snubbing uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and other allies, I mean, the list just goes on and on. The idea that he was a uniting force and Trump isn't, look, Trump's a divisive figure. No intelligent, sane person thinks that Trump is not divisive. But let's not pretend that he showed up out of nowhere. Donald Trump is specifically an answer to Barack Obama. Barack Obama crapped on half of America for eight years talking about how they're a bunch of bitter clingers that cling to their God and their guns. They're a bunch of backwards idiot rubes and telling us that we were a horrible person for telling the average American person that you're a horrible person for not wanting a 35 year old perverted transvestite from using the same bathroom as your four year old daughter. You're a hate monger for doing that. 
That's why people were like, you know what? We don't even care that he's been divorced three times. We don't care that uh, he's horrible with women. Screw it. He's the guy that is going to punch these people back in the mouth. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that's what happened. Donald Trump was an answer to Barack Obama. The reason that we have Trump is because of the way that Barack Obama was and the way that the left and the media treated him with kid gloves. I mean, God knows Trump has his problems, and I do not hold him up as an example of leadership. But to say that he's this uniquely divisive figure in American history when we just got through with Barack Obama? You've got to be outside your ever-loving mind. I don't understand how you can even arrive at that. I don't know what kind of stuff General Mattis is smoking in his retirement, but it's apparently some really good stuff. I mean, toward the end, Barack Obama's own people didn't even like him. And I'm not talking about black people. I'm not using the identity politics here. I'm talking about Occupy Wall Street and people that were mad at him for his drone strikes. Even people on the left thought that he didn't go far enough or didn't like him by the end of this. There were even people on his side that didn't even agree with him at that point. But we're supposed to believe that Donald Trump is this uniquely divisive figure? I mean, yeah, he's super divisive, but let's not pretend that he's the only one or that he somehow just cropped up in a vacuum. <sighs> I can't deal with it anymore. I just can't. I, the selective amnesia that has been coming out of people in the past several years, pretending that Barack Obama was this amazing, pristine figure that never did anything wrong. It just, it bothers me that people forget everything that happened more than 15 seconds in the past. I, do you not have an ounce of memory left? I, I, I just don't get it. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.